earlier I spoke with Shi Chen. He's an assistant professor at the Yale School of Public Health. And I began by asking him if slowing growth in China even matters when there's still so much room for drug companies to grow. I think uh, there are plenty of opportunities for American pharmaceutical companies and the rest of the, the world to enter into the Chinese market because uh, China has the largest population and the population is aging. Uh, the aging population means there are uh, rising chronic diseases which uh, really need medications, effective medications. And China currently doesn't have such uh, capacity to manufacture all these uh, drugs. So we see that last year there was a, a movie went viral, the Dying to Survive, where people were really frustrated with the lack of uh, medications, uh, especially for, for like a chronic disease like uh, cancer, uh, like diabetes. So there's plenty of uh, large market. And the Chinese government has been doing quite a lot in recent years uh, to facilitate the foreign complaints and uh, drugs and uh, medical devices to uh, go into China. For example, the US, uh, China's FDA, now the National uh, Medical Products uh, Administration, they've uh, accelerated uh, the, the drug approval process. They even more than tripled the staff members who are evaluating the new drug. China has made uh, being a, a first world healthcare uh, country a, a strategic priority, and, and it wants to do it at a fraction of the cost that other countries are paying for. And, and part of getting there is cost controls. And they've been asking these pharmaceutical companies, essentially, hey, if you want to have access to this vast patient pool, then you need to drop your prices. How receptive are the pharmaceuticals to that? Yeah, I think uh, uh, this is not only China, but many developing countries are doing this. They have a national drug pricing negotiation uh, scheme uh, trying to bring down the drug price. For example, the generic, uh, generic drugs in India is very uh, cheap compared to the Chinese counterpart. So that's uh, what's been documented in the real story uh, in the dying to survive. So China is uh, trying to use this called a value-based uh, a purchasing scheme to try to negotiate down the, the drug price. And uh, given the larger, very large Chinese markets, so eventually the, uh, the foreign um, uh, pharmaceutical companies will benefit from this, although the price will be cheaper, but they will gain the value, uh, the, the volume of the market. I think we've seen that Pfizer and Roche, that they've dropped some of their prices up by 70%. And certainly there are a lot of patients in the United States and the Trump administration that would like to see that type of reduction in price as well. As China continues to rise as a, a healthcare uh, destination and you see these pharmaceuticals uh, bending the knee, so to speak, to Chinese demands, how is that going to reshape the overall healthcare landscape globally? Uh, price cutting can benefit the world. For example, the, with the bigger market volume in China, the U.S. companies invest more and more in the Chinese market, uh, which will uh, help facilitate uh, uh, the R&D, research and development uh, for the drug development, and which will have uh, knowledge spill over to the world. But I think that currently there are some tariffs being imposed to this process, which uh, may uh, slow this uh, process. But and. Uh, so China already become a major R&D center for, uh, for those drug industry. And also China has been uh, bringing venture capital to US market and uh, Western countries uh, with, uh, with the R&D and d center. And this process uh, need to go on with the large uh, volume of Chinese market. And especially, uh, I would say China really needs to be a, a medical knowledge uh, uh, exporter instead of uh, importer. Uh, you know, some foreign uh, companies have often complained about unequal access to the Chinese market, regulatory barriers. What are some of the specific challenges for foreign pharmaceutical companies? This is an important question. I think one was that the, the previously the drug evaluation process was not uh, quite transparent. But that uh, uh, situation was uh, changing in the last few years. Uh, China uh, uh, upgraded its, uh, uh, they call the CDE, China Center for Drug Evaluation, and which should bring more experts to streamline the process of uh, cl clinical trial data review and uh, drug approval. And they try to integrate with the world standard, trying to accept uh, the clinical trials from countries who already has this uh, process. 